thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, first, uh, board members, uh, uh, Mr. Pizzo, there you are. <laughs> thank you for uh, inviting us to be part of this conversation today, because I think this has been one of the, um, Newburgh is one of the few school districts where I think we've, uh, we've definitely gone on deep end. And, and I think that's because of the leadership that's existing here and that's been, uh, that's had open arms. And we, uh, Metro Center, um, uh, which is the, uh, the center at NYU that we are housed in, you know, has very deep connections here. And uh, I'm glad to see the, uh, the Spanish uh, Spelling Bee winner is here because that project we actually run for the State Department out of our center. So, um, so we have a lot of connections going on here. But one of the key connections that we've been working on is addressing these, uh, these equity-based issues that Newburgh has been facing for many years. And we've been fortunate enough to have open arms with many of you as we've come in here over this, uh, the last several years. So some of our past initiatives that we've had going on has been around the disproportionality, which Mr. Swanson already mentioned. Um, the disproportionality project is something that we are under contract with the State Education Department to work with every school district in the state that is cited for a disproportionate representation of black and Latino kids in special education and suspension. So we've been doing regional trainings um, in the region, but we've also been working targetedly with school districts that are cited. So Newburgh has been one of the school districts that, um, that uh, has been cited, as Mr. Swanson said, but we were excited to actually say to the State Department, we want to work with that school district because we know that there's leadership there that's going to really move this forward. Um, we've also, as, uh, as Ed mentioned, uh, conducted the social services uh, needs assessment last spring, yes, and, um, and gained a great deal of knowledge in terms of understanding the depth to which um, depth and breadth of the social emotional needs that kids are demonstrating and the capacity of the school district and the community to actually address those needs. So currently, what are we doing? Our main thrust this past year has been doing our root cause analysis around the disproportionality citation that Mr. Swanson mentioned. And um, there are several sets of issues that were identified that actually are connected to what's, um, what's already laid out in terms of uh, uh, rectifying uh, throughout the school districts around the school district around curriculum and instruction. Um, a particular thing in terms of the, the instructional support teams that are existing in buildings, the types of uh, behavior supports and instructional frameworks that are existing across the buildings in trying to shore them up so that there is an understanding of the first line for kids uh, uh, receiving services is that core curriculum and instruction that's actually exist existing for everyone. So we're not having the relationship that Mr. Swanson mentioned. We want to minimize that type of relationship. Now, how are we going to do this? Um, moving forward into what we consider sort of our second full year of working with Newburgh, uh, one of the key things that we find in all of our school district as we do this work around disproportionality, because I have, to, you know, I have to step back and say, working on issues of disproportionality is not an issue because we rate disproportionality as a race-based outcome. So which means we, uh, as a center, we come in and do our work and we focus in on why this race-based outcome is actually occurring. And as, as Ed Forge had mentioned, there are issues around culture and climate that are existing within the buildings and across buildings that need to be addressed to ensure that there's equitable outcomes for all of our kids. And in order for that to happen, one of the key things that we find having to do with our school districts, and you know, we're in our eighth year of running this project across the state, one of the key things that we find that's, not only crit that's critical to happen is the work in the buildings, but it's also the work across the district. And a key piece that has already been uh, outlined is as, a, as, as district teams, there has to be a level of consistency around policies, practices, and a set of beliefs around making sure that this actually happens. So one of the key areas of our future initiative work is going to be what we call the equity team. And our main principle of emphasis around that is that this equity team is going to operate as what we call guardians of equity. So we're going to arm them with a set of, uh, of, of capacity to be constantly be able to monitor these sets of issues, um, these different sets of outcome issues. It's not just about disproportionality, it's also about achievement gap issues, it's also in terms of instructional gaps, opportunity gaps that are existing across the K-12 uh, span here in Newburgh. And so our work with the equity team is we're going to work at a district level with this team and um, we've already had two sets of meetings 
with this group, and they, they know who they are who are in this room, and they already have their homework assignments. Some of them have already forgotten, but we're going to remind them shortly. <laughs> but, um, and we're going to work throughout the summer because there is a level to which we, we would like for them to be at by the time September comes because they're going to move into a role of monitoring the implementation of what's going to happen in the upcoming year. I'm sure as you heard with, um, with Dr. Shanahan, Mr. Swanson, and Mr. Forge, it is the school district is taking on a lot of new initiative. And um, it, it's a lot to take on. And we need to have a mechanism that is going to allow us to monitor implementation, particularly the wellness of implementation, because we're going to struggle in trying to implement everything all at the same time. But we need to have a way in which to be able to monitor that. So uh, myself, Lorraine Lopez, and Roy Arab, who've been working here, are going to work with, the, uh, with this equity team at a district level to really do that and make sure that we're monitoring in three particular areas around curriculum and pedagogical practices, classroom management and behavioral practices, and the overall organizational structure of how we sort of how we maintain this work over time. And it's and I have to say this is not going to be easy work because um, as a center we're um, we're a friendly bunch but we're not easy to work with. Okay? We 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 are comforted by the fact that we ask the hard questions to really push a school district to its to its level of excellence that they desire. And the key thing about Newburgh is that we have great relationships with the leadership that's existing here that are open to accepting the hard sets of questions and work moving forward. So we are, we're definitely excited to come to work with you all again into us, our second full year with Newburgh. And I will turn it back over to Ed. Thank you, Dr. Fergus. Um, at this time, that concludes our presentation. Thank you for the time and, and the opportunity to present to you. If you have questions, my email is on the website. Shoot us an email. We'll do what we can to respond to you. Um, and we look forward to a very successful summer and a very successful next year. Thank you.